Adonis Stevenson retains his WBC light heavyweight world title with a fourth round knockout over Thomas Williams Jr. Now this fight was pretty interesting, for me at least, the way it unfolded. Because Adonis Stevenson, to me, looked defensively vulnerable, defensively sloppy. I felt like, offensively, he seemed a bit sharper than he has been in his past few fights. I thought his hand speed looked better. But, yeah, defensively, there was definitely holes. And it's not the first time we've seen holes in Stevenson defensively, but I think they're getting more and more obvious and more and more uh, commonplace in his fights. Either way, in the first round, I thought he started off well, sharply. He managed to drop Williams Jr. with that big left hand towards the end of the first round. Williams Jr. got back up. For those of you who have seen Williams Jr.'s previous fights, particularly his loss to Gabriel Campillo, you know that he essentially quit in that fight. Or his corner assisted him in quitting. That's how it appeared to be to me. And fighters who go through situations like that, they tend to have a bit of a chip on their shoulder afterwards. And in in some fights subsequent, subsequently, or at least one fight subsequently, they try and prove themselves to have heart. And this may have been that fight for Williams Jr. Because after that first round and a couple big shots he took in the second round, he decided, you know what, I, I can't stay on the outside with Stevenson because that's what he was trying to do in the first round. He was on the outside. He was giving Stevenson all the space in the world. He said, forget about that. Let me put my hands up and try to walk Stevenson down. And that's what he did. He came forward. He was throwing shots at Stevenson and he was landing shots. To be fair, when I watched it back on replay, some of the shots which appear to have landed clean on Stevenson in real time, in slow motion, you saw that Stevenson was kind of riding the punches. They still caught him, don't get it confused. But the way he was swaying his body, he was moving with the shots, you know. They call it riding the punches. So he was kind of doing that, Stevenson, to be fair. <clears throat> but nonetheless, he got caught. And he didn't seem entirely comfortable getting pushed back. So he started trying to fight fire with fire particularly in the third round, fourth round, uh, you know, start of the fourth. Stevenson said, okay, you want to fight me on the inside? Let's fight on the inside. He put his hands up and he showed that he was actually much better on the inside than Williams. He was a better punch picker on the inside. And he was able to tuck up fairly tight, actually, up close, Adonis Stevenson. Now, this is not particularly shocking to me, the fact that Stevenson was able to be effective on the inside. Because... I remember watching a fight, and again, this is not against a great opponent, but still, it showed uh, elements of Stevenson's game that a lot of people maybe haven't seen before. Uh, if you go on YouTube and type in Adonis Stevenson versus Dion Savage, that's D-I-O-N Savage, you'll see one of Stevenson's early fights. I think it was his fight after his loss to Darnell Boone, or one of his fights uh, shortly after his loss to Darnell Boone. You go watch that fight, Adonis Stevenson versus Dion Savage. And Stevenson was ripping tremendous punches up close. And the Dion Savage fight only lasts one round. While Stevenson was ripping wicked punches, body punches, head punches. It was just vicious stuff on the inside with both hands. Powerful right hooks, which is something we don't really see from Stevenson these days. Um... So if you watch that fight, you'll see that Stevenson, when he wants to, can fight up close. And he can be pretty damn devastating. But that's an element of his game which he's moved away from ever since joining the Crunk Gym under Manny Stewart and now Stewart's uh, nephew, uh, Javon Sugar Hill. He don't really fight on the inside much like that. He tends to use those ridiculously long arms that he has. And he had a much longer reach than uh, Williams Jr., but he negated all that. He gave that up. Whether it's because he was uncomfortable in the back foot or because he maybe felt as though Williams Jr. wasn't in his league and he could go on the inside and take care of him. I don't know. 
Maybe he was angry that Williams Jr. caught him with shots and he felt like he needed to prove something. I'm not sure what it was, but Stevenson went on the inside with Williams Jr. in the third and fourth. And he hurt Williams Jr. a few times. <laughs> Williams Jr. then started backing off and you know running around, trying to get away from the power. And in the final round, which was the fourth, Stevenson went to town and he landed a terrific left hand uh, over the top, which dropped Williams Jr. heavily. Now, prior to that, Williams Jr., I think it was in a, it may, it may have been in the second, third, or fourth. I can't even remember now, but there was a, there was a part where Williams Jr. appeared to be complaining that Stevenson had hit him in with an elbow or with a with a head or or maybe caught the corner of the glove or a thumb in Williams Jr.'s eye. He was complaining about it as if it was a sign that Williams Jr. wanted to quit again, you know, but he managed to push through that because the referee didn't really pay much attention to what he said. <laughs> he, he briefly, you know, had a look at him. Well, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Okay, let's get back to work. Um, so it almost seemed like a, a sign that Williams Jr. wanted to quit again, but no, he went back in and as I say, he eventually got caught with that big left hand from Stevenson. Um, Stevenson was pushing Williams Jr. back on the inside and landed a, a straight, very short left hand, which knocked Williams Jr. nearly unconscious. He fell down face first. It was a terrific shot. And as Williams Jr. was on the floor, barely conscious, he kind of, he, he moved himself off his face. It was incredible that he, he was still conscious, but just barely. And he kind of tapped himself on the shoulder. And he seemed to be looking at his corner. As if to say, I've got heart or I'm still okay or, or something like that. He clearly wasn't okay. He uh, didn't manage to beat the count. But yeah, I just felt like it was interesting the way that Williams Jr. was behaving. You know, I'm interested in the, uh, the psychology, particularly of fighters. So that's all she wrote anyway. Stevenson won the fight there and then. Great knockout. Um, but mixed mixed feelings about Stevenson's performance there. The power is tremendous in that left hand, but we already knew that. We already knew that anybody who gets caught clean with Stevenson's left hand in the light heavyweight division is going to have serious problems. You don't want to get caught with that shot. It's a tremendous punch. But outside of that and his ability to land that punch, because he does have, he is prolific with that left hand. Let's not get it confused here, people. He's prolific with it. He knows how to land it, fight after fight after fight. Um, even the fights where he's gone the distance, he's at least dropped a guy. Like in the case of Fonfara and Sakio Bika, he dropped them guys. Eventually, he's going to land the big left hand and somebody's going down. But defensively, the vulnerability is just more and more and more apparent. Each fight to me. Um, even though, as I say, said at the start of the video, he did look, in my opinion, offensively sharper. You know, his punches were coming out quicker to me than they were in his past few fights. More snappy. And um, that's something that future opponents are going to have to watch out for. I believe they're going to line him up. A fight with Elidia Alvarez. I think that's an interesting fight. Elidia Alvarez is not not an exceptional fighter. But he's pretty talented. He's technically pretty good. You know, pretty fast hands. Decent-ish power. Nothing special, but decent. He, he just looks like a competent boxer and an athletic type guy who had a, an interesting fight with Isaac Chalemba, actually. Some people feel that he did a better job against Chalemba than Kovalev did. Um, other people would disagree with that. He certainly didn't get caught clean as often against Chalemba as Kovalev did, from my recollection anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't know. You you guys let me know what you thought of Stevenson's performance and how long you think he can stay at the top. How will he do against Lydia Alvarez if that fight does go down? Um, and they're also obviously talking about uh, a fight between the winner of Vodsek and Joe Smith Jr., fighting Stevenson as well. Um, particularly if Vodsek manages to get past Joe Smith Jr., him against Stevenson would be interesting. I'd be favoring Stevenson at this point. But 
I don't know. I, I, I'm still not sure exactly what happened in there with Stevenson as far as why he opted to go on the inside. Was it through being tired? Was it just because he could and he felt like he could win the fight easier that way? Um, or was it because he was getting caught on the outside and he felt, you know what, I have to come on the inside so I'm not as vulnerable to getting caught, even though that gave Williams Jr. more of an opportunity to land his own shots. I don't know, man. Interesting. Um, how will he be after four or five rounds against Vodsek, for example? If Vodsek's still there and he hasn't taken anything. Um, yeah, you guys let me know what you thought of Stevenson's performance and the implications of uh, what you saw in there against Williams Jr. All right? Let me know how you feel in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.